Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Monday, September 26, around noontime, mountain time, 2022. Jupiter will shine tonight. It is the closest approach since 1963. That is Jupiter's opposition, and we'll get to that as snow is showing up in the models. But the big story. Hurricane Ian developed overnight and is now powering up right off of Cuba and the Cayman Islands. Keep calm. It's boom time. Hurricane Ian reached hurricane strength overnight and could become a catastrophic Cat 4 storm. Evacuations are beginning in Florida. We have the latest spaghetti models coming up. It looks like ground zero is somewhere between Tampa and a very unpopulated portion of Florida, which is good news. And landfall is only going to be about Cat 1 because this is going to weaken as it goes up the coast. The major effects will be in the Tampa Clearwater area because this is where the strongest winds, the closest the storm will approach to Florida. So heads up if you're in Clearwater. And you can see here the spaghetti models all lining up with that Clearwater area. About 80% probability that is the position of the storm. Still a wide breadth of probabilities, but look at how many of these models are all lining up on this bullseye. That being said, the southeast of the U.S. should also prepare for some catastrophic flooding rain up in the southern Appalachians and up through Georgia. So heads up for those regions. Let's check out the National Hurricane Center here. Hurricane Ian, advisory number 14, the most recent update. Winds just increased five miles per hour in the last hour, and it is increasing rapidly. Let's run this through so you can see what happened overnight. Take a look at the size of the storm and watch its width increase as the sun rises. That storm becomes the entire size of the state of Florida. There's Ian and there's Florida. So this is a gigantic storm that is going to intensify. It's going to move over the mountains of Cuba and weaken here and then it will re-intensify to Cat 4 here by 6 p.m. Tuesday. By that time, it's going to be Cat 4 this whole time and it, it could potentially bring some amazing amounts of rain to the Florida Keys, so heads up if you're in those regions, and we'll have a much better picture by Tuesday of where exactly this baby is going to hit. Now, here is the current cone of probabilities from the National Hurricane Center. They have a little different picture than our spaghetti models, but it's showing that this is going to make landfall somewhere up in a very unpopulated portion near Destin, Florida, I believe is up there. Don't quote me on that, but it's literally in point with hitting Gainesville if it goes on shore here. So Gainesville is in the center of the state. It'll be a much weakened tropical depression at that point or tropical storm as showing here. So Gainesville, Florida is not going to really receive the brunt of this. Anything on the western edge would be heavy rain. So this is Fort Myers and south. I'd be worried in your region for some heavy rain bands persistent lasting for 36 hours or more. And that could bring 8, 10 inches of rain to your region. And that is when the back everything fills up and the flood catastrophic flooding occurs. So be prepared to get out of harm's way if you're by the coast. And my thoughts and prayers going out to my brother who's right down there in the Fort Myers region. Uh, talked to him the other day. He is prepared. Now, uh, all eyes are on Hurricane Ian, which became a hurricane early this morning in the Western Caribbean Sea and may become a major hurricane tonight near Western Cuba. We're going to keep close eye on it for you. Stay tuned for updates. Now, regardless of Ian's track, I apologize for the phone. Okay, we're back. Now, regardless of Ian's track and intensity over the next several days, life-threatening storm surge, hurricane force winds, and heavy rain, flooding, and tornadoes are just some of the impacts the Sunshine State will see. So be prepared if you're on the West Coast. There's the warnings and watches coming up right now with backup power, water, food, and a bug out plan. If you're by the coast and it's looking to come hit you, go inland and stay in a shelter or stay with some friends. Don't make the stupid decision to ride out the storm like you're some kind of hero. Here we are at the GFS model showing snow coming in in two waves. We have an initial blast here that's going to make its way into the Rockies Saturday, October 1st. So just at the turn of the season, it looks like the first blast of snow in the snowpack is going to be coming. And then the models are just showing it, well, it's continuous after that. Winter has begun. Greenland also gained more record snow and ice over the weekend. We've been reporting on that. And early this morning, Cap Allon put this out, uh, which showed that Greenland's ice sheet was gaining even more. And he claimed eight gigatons of, of 
gain on Friday. Well, he <laughs> captured that before the actual finish of the day. And we actually finished on Friday with a 10 gigaton day. 10 gigatons of gain at the beginning of the free season. This is a record spike in Iceland ice production or Greenland ice production for the entire period that uh, records have been kept. You see here this gray zone. This is the maximum ice gain ever recorded. And the new record was broken this weekend with 10 gigatons of ice building in the very beginning of that ice season. Absolutely amazing. Seismic update. We're at the Reykjanes Ridge where there was a flurry of activity about 24 hours ago offshore from the Reykjanes Peninsula. As a whole, Iceland has quieted down completely. And we'll show you all regions now. And you can see that spike is coming from right offshore here on the Reykjanes Peninsula. Maybe that's another pulse of more magma that will be moving into that region. And you can see overall seismicity after that pulse has increased. So we'll keep a close eye on Iceland as things continue to develop. Now, overall, on the planet wide here, we could see some activity south of Iceland uh, overnight here at the Reykjanes Ridge with some aftershocks, multiple five magnitudes worldwide, a 5.1 in Honduras, a 5.2 in the Aleutian Islands, and we just had a five magnitude go off the map here. We also have a 5.5 down in Vanuatu, so all is pretty quiet worldwide. All is quiet worldwide with volcanoes as well, which is good news, no big boomers, as we move on to more science news. Scientists looked at nine cyclones swirling at Jupiter's North Pole thanks to the Juno spacecraft, and they are baffled. <laughs> well, if we used a theory of plasma cosmology or electric universe model, there would be some pretty easy explanations for this type of hydrodynamics being viewed at the North Pole of Jupiter. But I do digress. Jupiter is shining during its closest approach tonight, so get out and look up. It's the closest Jupiter will be since 1963, and it is in opposition. Now, what that means is here's the Earth, here's Jupiter, and here's the Sun. So Jupiter is in opposition with the Sun, with the Earth in the middle. Pretty fantastic. Um, so get out there and look up. Sometime around 10 o'clock, you should see Jupiter up on the horizon a little bit to the southeast. Now, here's an interesting story. The ancient city of Great Zimbabwe was an engineering wonder, but archaeologists credit it to Phoenicians, Babylonians, and Arabians. Anyone but the Africans who actually built it. Well, how do they know who built it? And what I'm going to show you here is something spectacular. If you start to look at these walls and the way they're built with no masonry, meaning there's no mortar in between here, these are dry set stone walls. I have a background in dry set masonry. I did that for about five years as a side gig. But I want you to know the structures. Take a look at the structures. The size of the walls, the amazing masonry, the round structures, and the towers. And then this is the time frame they were built between 1100 and 1450. Now, this is the same time all throughout the southwest of America, we were building the same constructions with the same size stones and the same circular columns and pillars. How is it that the entire world is using the same construction at 1100 AD everywhere on the planet? That is not a coincidence. This is not a coincidence that in Africa, the same Pueblos that we have here in the Southwest exist with circular stone walls, what appear to be kivas, and what appear to be towers, just like the Anasazi built here in the Southwest. What is going on? Well, I'll tell you what's going on. We don't know anything. History has been hidden. It's hidden by the rulers of the planet so that they can create the narrative. And here's another example. Tutankhamun's burial chamber may not be the burial chamber that it's just a small part of Nefertiti's tomb. And they think that there's a hidden door in there to a much bigger area, they think. You don't think that the powers that be already know this? But they can't hide it any longer. And this is due to LIDAR and other 
deep imaging techniques that we can look through walls. And so maybe soon we'll have some amazing discoveries happening in Egypt where Nefertiti's tomb may just be hidden behind this stella on this wall with amazing riches and hidden information. Now it's a miracle. The Gran Abuelo in Chile could be the world's oldest living tree. The 100 foot Alers, Alerse, however you want to call it. It's in fact a Patagonian cypress, so we'll stick with that. The 100 foot Patagonian cypress has been estimated at 5,484 years old. 600 years older than Methuselah in California. There's the potentially 5,000 plus year old tree in question. Pretty amazing. Now, this is a Patagonian cypress tree, which is a coniferous tree that is the only species of the genus Fitzroya of the cypress family. It's a native to southern Chile and southern Argentina. It's literally a living fossil. And it's also thought to be related to the giant sequoia, which would make them the two oldest trees on earth. And fascinating at that. Now, if you're looking for the fountain of youth, like these trees found, they've been alive for millennia. There is a paper that came out in 2019, the solar synthesis deuterium depletion hydrolase transfiguration principle. Now that sounds like a lot of mumbo jumbo, but what they're talking about here is a scientific analysis of living water using a multidisciplinary approach and actually unlocking the fountain of youth. So if you want to dive deep down a rabbit hole, I will leave you the entire seven-page paper, and you can do your own homework on solar synthesis deuterium depletion hydrolase transfiguration principle. Now, our hearts and our prayers go out to the family of Dr. Tim Ball, a friend of the channel and a hero, in my opinion. And not only that, a fighter. He stood up to Tim Mann and won three times in court in Canada of all places. But it is with deep grief that we announce the passing of Dr. Timothy Ball, one of the heroes and climate realists that we've had on the show. Now, there will be a Go GoFundMe page going up because this is what happened. Given the execrable Michael Mann never paid his court costs, this was ordered by the judge after Tim Ball won every case, three in a row. He proved that that hockey shtick was nonsense, but the mainstream media didn't report on it. Now, even though he won in a court of law, he had to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars in lawyer costs, and Tim Ball, uh, or Michael Mann, was ordered to pay him back, and he did not. So this scumbag is now the biggest scumbag on the planet, Michael Mann. And so let's stick it to the man. And when that GoFundMe comes up for Tim Ball and his expenses, let's give big and give deep. And if you want to memorialize Tim, we've done several interviews with him. This is one of our favorite. This is back August of 2019. We're going to link you to Dr. Tim Ball, Climate Corruption, Globalist Agenda 2030. Wait, do you see what he has to say? This is right before the hoo <laughs> And so... God bless you, Tim, and all your work. We love you. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Hope you got something out of the video. We love Tim Ball. Let's keep him in our hearts and our prayers. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people and be safe. And that's a boom.